Hello again. Uh, welcome back to the Sterling Engine project. In this video, uh, we're going to continue exploring whether a slightly modified alternator can be made to create useful power from our Sterling engine. So to start with, I'll take you through the modifications we've made since last time, and then we'll run the engine to test the alternator and then have a conclusion at the end. I've just taken the back cover off, off the alternator um, and it looks to be good news. Uh, this unit here, are the is, this is the brushes for the field winding and it's actually a separate unit. So I should be able to um, get to the, the terminals here to charge this independently of the, um, the control uh, um, or the regular rectifier of the, of the alternator. Just unscrewed the unit and it's popped off. The only thing that connects it to the actual alternator are these um, these push terminals. So there you go. I've just soldered on two cables, and that's it in place. There we go. With the cover in place, and Bosch has left a convenient slot here for the wires to come out of. Okay, I'll take you through the alternator setup now. So we, if we look here with these thick red and black cables, they are running through our watt meter, which is reading 11.86 volts, which means the battery is um, a little bit flat. And then they're connected directly to the battery. And then the other circuit we got now is the two wires coming out from our field windings, which is now independent from the uh, the rest of the control system on the alternator. This is going through a pulsed, a pulse width modulating uh, controller. <clears throat> they use these kind of things on motors and uh, dimmable 12 volt lighting and that kind of thing. Uh, it's got a potentiometer pot on it. So if you turn it up, you get more volts, turn it down, you get less volts. And that is connected directly to our battery. So what I've found, because I've, I have actually measured the amperage of this, is that this pulls half an amp. So the field windings take uh, half an amp of current. Okay, I'll just quickly light the thing a minute. One more thing I forgot to mention, we've got our tachometer here, this is the um, optical tachometer. So I've put the reflector strip on the alternator so we can monitor what speed the alternator is spinning at as well.
There you go, the engine's all up to temperature now. I can't tell you how fast the alternator or the flywheel was going because my tachometer doesn't appear to be working. I'll stop it in a minute and give the uh, reflective strips that I've attached to uh, the alternator and the flywheel a clean off uh, and see if we can get it going. The odd thing is that we seem to have 13 volts now. Now that is extremely strange because this unit here that powers the field winding is actually turned off. So I don't know what's going on there. The only thing that I can think of is the, uh, the rotor is, mag is naturally magnetized. So it's still generating a voltage even though the field windings are turned off. Um, we know they're isolated from the rest of the alternator because um, because I've soldered the two cables onto the two terminals on the, the separate unit. I'll just disconnect um, these wires here from the field wire. It's just to, just to double prove that they're not being energized. Um, I'll just have to put the camera down a minute. There we go, that's dis disconnected. I better disconnect that one as well just to double prove it. Well, that was interesting. As soon as I disconnected the uh, the second field winding, uh, the speed went through the roof. It might be that one of the connections on the um, uh, the field winding brush unit is actually um, earthed or something like that. Maybe it is. What I'll do is I'll um, I'll disconnect the wires here and flip them over. We, we might have them the wrong way around. Well, I've just had a little mishap. Uh, well, we rewiring this thing. I've just, uh, I connected the, I got the positive and negative input right back to front. So this unit has just blown itself to bits. So um, <laughs> as far as testing that, that's the end of that until I can get another one ready. How annoying. All right, so this is our damaged unit. You can see the capacitor, I think, is uh, blown up. I didn't really realise it could blow up quite so much, if I'm perfectly honest, because it blew the uh, blew the knob off the potentiometer. Um, I've just pulled this one out of the bin because I blew this one up the other day. But I don't think the capacitor's um, blown up. I'll, I'm going to remove that capacitor and um, see if I can reattach it to this one to get it going. So there we go. That's the um, the old control board. I've changed that capacitor over. I hope it's uh, the same capacitor. I can't tell um, by the old one because that one's been blown up. <laughs> so um, so I've put it on there and now we'll give it a go. While I've been doing this, um, the engine has been running um, continuously. So it's not all bad. Uh, at least the engine is getting a good workout. Well, I'll, um, I've got this back in place now, wired up. Uh, but it doesn't seem to be doing anything, so I think it's uh, probably another component that's cooked on it. These only cost a few pounds each, so really I'll probably have to get a new one. Uh, so we're not having too much luck today. This linkage uh, has just come, come attached, disattached from the, uh, uh, from the pivot arm. I don't think the bolt is broken. Um, I don't know whether the bolt, the nuts come loose under its own accord, or I've forgotten to tighten it up. Um, I'm not too sure. So I'll, I'll get that back in there in a minute and uh, we get the engine going again. Well, I've put the bolt back in. 
The only problem is um, there is a space in behind the nut and it's bounced off somewhere. I've been looking around and all the crevices it could have gone, but I just can't see it anywhere. Um, we're on the grass, so if it has twink pinged off somewhere, it's probably lost forever. Um, I'll see if I can get some lock washers a minute just to substitute that, just, just so we can get going again. Try and, uh, try and achieve something today. <laughs> In some kind of way, a couple of lock washers may not be the be not not my, may not be a bad thing to use there. Really, at least it uh, locks it. <laughs> Things aren't going too well really. <laughs> I've just had this high pressure pump running and this fan running. Actually the fan is still uh, running very slowly. Um, I couldn't work out um, how I just lost all the voltage. Uh, but then I realised the belt's uh, gone loose somehow. I'll stop it in a minute because it's not really turning very well. Uh, also there is some kind of collision going on here now probably after the bolt fell out so um yeah so i think i'm gonna abandon the test for the day because uh everything i touch seems to break <laughs> so i think we'll leave it there i found out why the belt was going loose because um where i've tied it together with um whipping twine it's starting to come come loose there so that's why that is loose <laughs> Right, after our collision a minute ago, where this linkage fell off, we've ended up with a bit of a, a tight bit in the engine. At this point here, there's some nasty noises and the engine's tight. Um, I'm going to have to take the bits now to investigate this because um, I think I've broken something inside. <laughs> something is not right there. So, uh, I'll let it cool down and then we'll go from there. <laughs> I need to build a new one, Isaac. Yeah. You need to take it apart and build a new one. Oh, thank you. Woo! There you go. I just wanted to take a shot of the hot bulbs. Look at them. Glowing red hot. I can hardly get near it, really. It's uh, running hotter than uh, I normally would let it. But because of our mechanical malfunction, um, I've had to stop the engine. Also, look, if you, I don't know if you can see in the video, but look how hot the back one is compared to the front one. That's not great because uh, it means one side is going to be working harder than the other side. So then, then you get an imbalance in the engine. But then that is inherent in this particular design. Well, we're back in the garage after a bit of a, bit of a tough day. We've had quite a few breakages and, uh, and problems along the way. Um, so what have we learnt from this? So the, the speed of the alternator is, um, the maximum speed we recorded was 2,500 RPM, um, which is quite fast, but not very fast for an alternator. That's really the bottom end of when an alternator starts charging. Um, so not ideal. Our, our belt has come undone. Um, that's probably not too hard to solve, really. I've used... Um, uh, I've used whipping twine to secure that together. I could actually replace it with, I was thinking, um, welding wire or something like that. Uh, something a bit more durable. So that's not too much of a problem. Um, the other problem was, um, is the charging voltage. We're still, even when it did charge momentarily, we're still only getting um, just under 12 and a half volts, which isn't, isn't enough, unfortunately. Um, I still think this is due to the alternator not quite spinning fast enough. So the, the field windings, um, before I blew up the controller by connecting it back to front, um, I did get a measurement of how much they were taking. It was taking half an amp of current, um, which isn't a great deal really. If you consider the system is, uh, it would be 14 volts-ish when it's charging. So we're, we're only talking 7 watts of energy 
So that's not like the big problem as such, because um, the engine generates um, almost, I think it's 450 watts, I think we measured it as. So, so not that's not the big problem really. I'm going to disassemble the engine and have a good look at things to find out what's going on. There's a big nasty knock, so I need to get that to bits over the next week or two to solve. So there we go, I just need to fix the engine for the next time and, um, and work out the next steps. Um, as far as the alternator is going, I'm kind of starting to shy away from it a little bit. A lot of viewers have um, talked about uh, permanent magnet uh, type generator motors. Um, so I think we need to look at some of those options and uh, perhaps get a new setup um, ordered on, on the way. Um, thank you for all the viewers, um, for all your comments and questions from last time. Once again, if you could uh, give us a few hints and tips um, for the next steps, that would be much appreciated. Thank you very much for watching.